Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In you, Lord God. In you, Lord God, we live and move and have our being. It's in you, your sacrifice, your death, the shedding of your blood, the hanging on the cross. In the tomb, resurrected, the Holy Spirit come. All of it, Lord. We worship you and we thank you today. Because that is what has redeemed us and saved us and brought us into the very family of God. And we give you all the praise and all of the appreciation. We call you Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Savior, the anointed Christ, the lover of our souls, the captain of our salvation. We thank you and we worship you and we praise you for you are the Holy One, O oh God. You are the Holy One. There's a power that's here today. It's a little different. I can sense it in the Spirit. God always manifests himself in power and grace and love, but there's something here today that appears to be a foundation, a rock. And on that rock, we have our faith and trust. We all know that in this world, we face so many different situations, circumstances, things that are happening on the world scene right now, as well as just locally and in our own individual families. We want the power of God, and God has promised deliverance. And he's put the power in the hands of the church. I'm going to be talking about some of that today. But there's something that is a base that we have to remember. You know, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when Nebuchadnezzar was having them to be thrown into the fiery furnace because they would not bow and when they to him and worship him and they made this statement that we don't know if God's going to save us but we will not deny him and sometimes people look at that from the standpoint of what do you mean you don't know it's kind of like you had a lack of faith and I don't really think that's where the three Hebrew children were going with that. I think what they were saying is, you know what? At the base of all things, the only solidity, the only foundation that we have, and of course in New Testament terms now, is to trust in God, to trust in Jesus Christ. He is the rock of our salvation. And if we will keep our focus on Him, then I believe we will see the absolute miraculous manifestation of God's hand in our favor. So I encourage you today to just pray this with me out loud. And if there's anyone on live stream that has never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you say these things now with us. And I guarantee you that the Holy Spirit is going to come into your heart and you will be transformed and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, we call upon you now in honor and respect and reverence for all you've done. You are the rock. My heart is called upon you. Save me, God. Save me from all sin save me from spiritual death save me from all the afflictions that are in the world i call upon you i confess you as my lord and my savior my rock my salvation in that i will trust 
Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord God. Yeah, you can give the Lord a hand clap. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Give somebody a hug. Thank you, Brian. What wonderful worship. Wonderful heavenly worship today. Glory to God. Praise the good Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Hello, everyone. So nice to see you. Praise God. We welcome each and every one in the room and also those on live stream. Thank you for joining us in our um, worship experience, our glory encounter today, because the glory of the Lord is here. One of the things that CK and I have always said is that we refuse to do anything without the anointing, without the manifestation of God's glory in our midst, period. Otherwise, it just becomes a form, and we don't want form. We want the reality of the life and the power of the living God. Hallelujah. And you're just like us, aren't you? That's why you're here today. And so before I get going, uh, I do want to ask, is there anybody in the room right now that this is the very first time that you have been here in our studio? Very first time. Is there anyone? I do see at least one hand. Where are you from? Where do you hail from? Okay, you are local. You're from Vegas. Good. I'm glad that you're here. Vegas is a great city. Ah, I live here. It's got to be good. Any other hands? Okay. Well, praise God. There are probably many new um, joining us on the live stream today. You're in for a treat. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit is going to whack you. That's a good whack. So... You can trust that. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I pray right now, Lord, I just ask for the revelation of the Spirit of God to come. And Lord, that's what we desperately need today. We need it every day. Oh man, we're built upon the rock. We are solid on that salvation here today. The shed blood of Jesus, the redemptive power of Jesus, it's ours. But, Lord, every day of our lives, we need the fresh bread. We need the fresh touch. We need the fresh grace. Hallelujah. And your mercy and your wonder that comes to us every morning. We thank you for that, Lord. And so as the Holy Spirit moves upon me, I pray that I articulate this well. But more importantly is that the people's hearts... The Holy Spirit breathes upon them to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, today I want to share some things with you uh, that uh, are prophetic. The Lord spoke to me uh, over the last few days and uh, they're just some really good things that are happening in the months ahead. How many of you had the opportunity to watch the live stream, even if you did it later on demand, that I did yesterday? Okay, how many of you watched that? All right, so I can see that uh, here in the room, it was about one third of the hands that went up. I would really encourage you to watch that live stream. Uh, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Just subscribe, hit the notification, like it, uh, and get all the notifications when the videos come out. Those of you on the live stream also can do the same. There are many of you that didn't see it. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to actually review that a little bit today, but then I'm going to go into step two, the second thing that the Lord shared with me, because the first one 
uh, is the building point. But the second point today is something I think will really encourage you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, one of the things that I shared on that live stream is that I was praying yesterday. I have been praying, and I know that you have too, about all of the situations that are going on in the world today. There are things that are about your own life, things about uh, your family, but there's also national, there's the world scene, there's, uh, you know, things that are going on with uh, Israel and its war with Hamas right now in the Middle East, uh, how that Michael, the war angel, is definitely there protecting them. Uh, you know, I was praying about this administration that we're under right now because not only is it something that I do not believe in, I do not conform to the political platform that they put forth, but I know the Lord spoke to me uh, in 2021, two years ago, and he told me that everything that Biden touches will fail. And he told me why. I don't wish to go into that whole vision. I've shared it with you before. It's out there. It's on the uh, um, YouTube videos, uh, etc. But basically, he just said, he, he quoted John 10 to me, where he said that anybody who uh, climbs up another way, he said, I am the door, and anyone who climbs up another way is a thief and a robber. And he said, Biden has climbed up another way. And he is a thief and a robber. And therefore, the judgment that is upon him is everything that he touches, everything he puts his hand to, will fail. It's the reverse Midas touch. Uh, and so we, in, in my own opinion, have suffered a great deal in this wonderful nation because of the administration policies. So I was praying a lot about that. The economy right now. You might as well get used to it. Things are going to get a little darker and a little worse than before they get better. It's absolute true. Right now, I've been sharing that with you, CK, also uh, over, you know, going into this year. But there's also the other side of the coin. And that is, is that the hand of the Lord is upon us. And I guarantee you that God always intervenes in behalf of his children. Isaac sowed in the land of famine and reaped a hundredfold return. And so Isaac, uh, Isaac's blessing was not based upon the fact that he was in a land of famine. It wasn't based upon the economy of the time. It wasn't based upon the government. It was based upon the covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ at that point, of course, Jehovah. But it's a covenant relationship that we have, and God is going to move mightily. And I want to share a few of those things with you today. But I'm just building a framework, a foundation here, and showing you that those were the things that I had been praying about. And yesterday morning, I was praying about them, um, and I realized that in the midst of all this, that there's a lot of confusion and concern and fear in people's hearts. I mean, look at it. It's, it's okay. If the economy is a problem, what am I going to do about it? How's that going to affect my family? How am I going to feed my kids? You know, how am I going to buy school clothes? What about this? What about that? And all those things I say, those are genuine concerns in your life. Those are very important things. But I also say that you have a covenant with God, and it's a time to submit those concerns to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He didn't say you couldn't have them. He said, seek him, and then he will bring them unto you. And many people would just have this, this lack of solidness in their heart about the sign of the time. And particularly if you're a Christian, you know, as a Christian and you read the Bible, then you understand that the Bible talks a lot about the end times and about Israel's place in that. And so people are wondering, you know, war in the Middle East. Is this a time that Jesus may come back? Is it going to be the battle of Armageddon around the corner? Uh, you know, what about Gog and Magog? And, what about, and all these kind of things. And it's only natural for our hearts to want to know uh, the signs of the times and, 
and, and what is going on, but it's another thing to do that based upon fear rather than faith in what the Scripture declares and what the Spirit of God is breathing right now upon us. And one of the things that I have made clear over the last few weeks is that I personally do not believe that this is the end war, that this is the lead-in to the Battle of Armageddon. Now, if I'm wrong, then uh, no harm, because we're all going to heaven anyhow. But if I'm right, then why fear? If I'm right, then why go hole up, you know, somewhere? I've known people who have felt like, oh man, it's getting so bad, and they've sold everything that they own and go get off the grid somewhere. And then after about two, three, four, five years, come back to society because it didn't happen. Okay? So all I'm saying here is that we have to be wise in the things of the Lord. And one of the things that I did when I uh, first got saved and first went into the ministry is I just went to the Lord and I asked him, I said, Lord, how do I deal with all this? I see all the scriptures and, and I've studied them very deeply. Uh, and the more that I get into the prophetic, I'll be honest with you, the more mature and more knowledge just over the years is the more that I understand that it's not quite exactly the way that most people teach it. Now, I'm not here to correct anybody's theology or do any of that today. I'm only expressing something from my heart. Is that why should I, as a Bible teacher, a student of the word, as a prophet with multiple visions and dreams and understanding the way spiritual things happen, etc., then get all of the teaching about these things from someone who is not spirit-filled, has never spoken in tongues and never had a dream, doesn't understand how these things in the spiritual realm play out. And that's all I'm saying is that I wish to be um, careful in my approach to interpreting scripture by experiences that are happening rather than interpreting the experiences by the Word and the Spirit of God. So all I want to do is just bring hope to you and let you know that I believe that we have a, a, a long life in front of us. I believe that God's promise that he would bring a satisfied long life to us, that he will intervene, that he will move in our lives, and we should do that. And you know, when I asked the Lord about these things way back, as I mentioned earlier, is he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to live your natural life as if you will never see me in your lifetime. Come back. Keep your affairs straight, your finances in order, your relationships, your ministry. Do it all as if you were going to live a long life and then Come to heaven with me. But I want you to live your spiritual life as if I was coming back tonight. He said, keep it pure, righteous, love me, worship me, stay in the word. Do all of these things because you do not wish to have that slumber that comes upon the minds of those who... Just think, well, he's not going to come back next week or in my lifetime. And so, therefore, I've got a little time to just yield to the flesh. Just do a few things that I wish to do. You, you understand what I mean? And so, I have endeavored for all of these years to obey the Lord in that. And I, would, I think it's pretty good advice and I would encourage you to do the same thing. The decisions that you make today, make sure they are spirit-led. Uh, I'm not telling you what those decisions should be. They should be spirit-led, but they should be with a firm foundation and knowing what the Lord wants for you. Praise God. Let's don't run off half-cocked. Let's don't get into fear. Uh, there's, a, there's a concern, 
We have to deal with situations that are going on. I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm praying for Israel right now. I'm praying for the Archangel Michael to just absolutely clean their clocks. Um, you know, I'm talking about protect Israel and so forth. I, I, I don't want to get too emotionally into these things because then I'll say some things. But I'm going to tell you something. I am a man of peace, but I am not a pacifist. Absolutely. I, I don't know why I'm going to say this, but you might as well hear it. I grew up in a family, believers. My dad was a strong man. He was a prophet. He was masculine. He was a man. He taught me basically how to be a man. He taught me a good work ethic. He was a hard worker all of his life. He taught me to be honest. But he also taught me how to hunt and how to fish. And I'm very familiar with those techniques, with firearms, with other things. I'm just saying, just saying. And so I am a man of peace, but you break into my house, you will find out. You try to harm my family, you'll discover what that means. Enough said, I hope. Um, I was not in the military. My father was a World War II vet. My brother, a Vietnam vet. My draft number was so high when I was 19 years old, there was no chance of them ever calling me up. And so I went to college. But I'm just saying... The Lord wants us, calls us. You find it even in Romans so much. He talks about how that he has given the authorities and police and armies and all these things for righteousness. The problem is not what the Lord has set up. The problem is with people that may fill those positions. Okay. Okay. Moving right along. So these were the things that I was dealing with. And in the midst of it, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I will show my wisdom, strength, and power in the months ahead. Hear that. I will show my wisdom, strength, and power in the months ahead. God's getting ready to show himself strong. Now, a lot of people say, well, I want to know what those are. I can't tell you exactly what those are. I can tell you Israel will win in that point. But in the United States, I can tell you that this administration is going bye-bye. But my point in all of this is not to point out or to tell you the events, but to tell you how to navigate those events in the Lord spiritually so that you will come out well on the other side. That's my whole purpose in this sermon today. So when he said, I will show myself or show my wisdom, strength, and power in the months ahead, he followed it up, and I could just hear this by saying, he didn't say the words, but I, I knew this. I heard it on the inside of me. The world is constantly changing, but God never changes. Okay? In Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says, The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. In Hebrews 1, 3, in the Amplified Version, it says that Jesus is the very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Praise God. So Jesus, his word, and he is the word, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is unchangeable. 
We live in a changing world, but we serve a God who is unchanging. And within his unchangeableness is all of the ability to deal with the world's changes from the time he placed man on here, mankind, until he returns. It's all incorporated in him. There is a constant there. So therefore, since we are in him and he is in us, we become the only constant that holds things together now. We are the salt and we are the light of the earth. We are the salt that preserves. We are the light that reveals. We also are children of the word and the spirit. And because of that, we hold within us, each believer, the whole of the body of Christ even, and specifically, I'll talk about the lion's army that he's called up in this day and time. Hold the constant, the spiritual constant of who God is and how he upholds and maintains the universe. Mankind cannot do that. Only the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Isn't that something to think about? In you. In you. Lives the constant. In you. Is the ability to maintain. And so we as the body of Christ. Are going to uphold and maintain. There's that. What I call a constant principle. A principle of constant, however you want to say it, that is here. We must recognize that. We must believe that. And we must operate in that. We must know that we can change what's going on in the spiritual realm, not in the flesh. The flesh was not created to handle these things. Not even in the rationalization that come to our minds. Our minds, the carnal aspect of our minds, cannot even handle and figure out what is going on and what to do about it. But our spirits were created to be so filled with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that we would represent Him on the face of this planet now. As it is in heaven, so it is in earth. Your will in heaven, your will on earth. What we bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. What we loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. The divine connection, we carry it. And we must believe that and we must use it. It means that we have the ability to pray in supernatural authority. That third heaven authority that God has given to us. And that we can change things in the spirit and the things in the natural realm must change along with it. Praise God. And that's one of the things that I firmly believe that in this day and hour that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ himself must rise. But I realize that many will not. So therefore, God has been dealing with me for some time that those that arise, those that are the prophetic warriors, those that are the eagle warriors, that will ride on the wings of the Spirit and soar up in the heavenly realms and begin to see things from God's heavenly perspective, looking down and motivated by the Spirit of God to act and to decree and to prophesy and to do all of the things that he has called us to do in releasing that authority. That's you and I. You and me. That's what we do. But we have to believe that and then do it. And when we do it, have the assurance that we're making the difference. Praise God. That's the lion's army that's rising up. The lion's army that says to all the circumstances 
opposing Christ in the earth. You have lost. We have won. In Jesus' name. Lion's Army. You know what I've been doing the last couple of years is asking for a Lion's Army roll call. And one of the partners wrote and said, it's a Lion's Army roar call. Yes, Lion's Army. How many of you? Let's do a roar call right now. How many of you in this room are in the Lion's Army? Yes, and you've risen to take that. How many of you on the live stream right now are part of the Lion's Army? Let's do a roar call right now. Roar <laughs> in the chat room, in the comments. Roar. People have been roaring over the last few weeks from every state and nation. Praise God. It's absolutely so uplifting to see so many people, believers, who are right there. They understand these things. So I'm going to say this one more time. This is reviewing yesterday. Is that we are the constant. Jesus never changes. Our natural life changes. But our heart and our relationship with him does not. And therefore he operates through us with that constant principle of upholding and maintaining. So we're going to rise and we're going to do our job. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to go into step number two. Part two. I want to deal with more prophetic word. I didn't share this yesterday. I saved it for today. But the Lord also spoke to me, and I'm going to address it from uh, 1 Corinthians 12. In the first few verses. We are not just a constant. We are a supernatural constant. We are not just natural. We are supernatural. We are not just a people of God. We are living spirits of God. We are stones in the foundation of his house. And the building of it. Praise God. Listen to this. This is my introduction into this second part. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong chapter. That's a good one. Read it when you get home. In the wrong book. Second Corinthians. That was First Corinthians. <laughs> okay, Second Corinthians twelve. It is doubtless not doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I will come to what? Visions and revelations of the Lord. Now listen as he goes on. Verse 2, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which are not lawful for man to utter. And so... Those of you who have read my book on Third Heaven Authority, this puppy right here, then uh, you are bettered for it. Uh, I just received word a few days ago that tomorrow, no, Tuesday, October 31st, the audio book comes out. So it is being released. So you can go to our website those of you in the live stream, and you can find the links for not only the hard copy here, well, paperback, but you know what I mean, uh, the printed copy, and also the link for the audio book. Third Heaven Authority. The Lord, when he caught me up to heaven in that vision, 
And he told me to teach third heaven authority to his people. One of the scriptures that he used, because I'd never heard that phrase before, that came from the lips of Jesus. He said that to me. I went, third heaven authority, okay. You know, there's only one place in the Bible that I knew that that phrase was used, and that was by the Apostle Paul here in this chapter. And so I've taught a lot on those things before, but here is what the Lord was sharing with me that's going to happen. He said that the world, or excuse me, that he will show his wisdom, strength, and power in the months ahead. One of the things that he shared with me, by the way, get ready for miraculous things. His power, his power is, is going to happen. I remember I was thinking about it, um, uh, that Mel Tari. Anybody in here ever heard of or read Mel Tari's book? They're in, I do see a few hands. C.K. and I were young. We were in our 20s, maybe late 20s, I can't, right around that age, when we met Mel Tari. And... Uh, he spoke in a church that we were pastoring at that time, um, co-pastoring with a, a friend of mine. And the miraculous things that happen is there was one time where uh, because of the great persecution stuff that they were uh, experiencing and how that the enemy was coming, the persecutors were coming to catch them, to kill them, because they were Christians. And they came up against a raging river. They prayed and walked across the raging river to dry land on the other side and escaped. And the Lord was dealing with me through that about all of the miraculous things that we have in front of us. He is opening up a new time of miraculous endeavors. And that's why it's so important for us to understand that we are covenant people and that he is going to show himself strong. Hallelujah. His power will be released in the days ahead. And, and this scripture right here, the Lord began talking to me about, and he said, look in verse 1 again. It is doubtless not, not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations. Visions and revelations. And even though I've read that about 500 times, it suddenly occurred to me that Paul was saying, in visions and revelations other than visions, spiritual encounters, supernatural experiences, other than the visions. And he had visions, many miraculous things. And the Lord began talking to me and saying, we are now entering a time, even though this has been available to a large degree throughout the entire church age, we're entering a time now where there's going to be an increase. He reminded me of how that he said when he caught me to heaven that first time and he gave me that uh, mission to teach third heaven authority, he said, from this point forward, the veil between the natural and spiritual realm will seemingly grow thinner and people will be having more supernatural encounters and experiences. And they need help. They need guidance. He said there are others in the body of Christ that have given commissions to to help in that endeavor also. But he said yours is one. It needs to be credibility. There needs to be understanding in how to navigate the heavenlies and operate in these spiritual things. And yesterday morning, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I am going to increase those supernatural encounters. They are coming. It's part of me showing my power on the face of the earth. You will see it. I remember as a young Christian um, back during the um, Israeli war that was in the early 70s, I believe at that particular point, and how the testimonies were coming out about how the missiles being launched, this was before the Iron Dome, missiles being launched and that they would come 
And then suddenly in the clouds, a lion's head would appear. And then it was like an angel just swatted the missiles out of the air and they would fall to the ground and explode in all of these other places. That was just one of just many of the kind of miracles that happen. I expect those things. Israel's going to experience those kind of miracles right now. I know it as well as I know anything because I can sense it. I can see it. And we are also going to experience those kinds of things here in our nation because God, God spoke to me and he said in 2014 that I am giving charge to Michael, the war angel, okay, the prince of Israel. He said, pray for Israel and pray for America because Michael is going to deal with the enemies of Israel, even those that are in political office in the United States. And we see a lot of opposition, that darkness that's rising right now uh, in America. Yes, I'm going to go down that road. I told you, has to deal a lot with the rise of militant terrorist Islam. Let me tell you something. I'm putting my neck out there, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. We talk about Israel and the war with Hamas. And that Hamas is not the Palestinian people. But it was not Hamas that was marching in the streets of New York and Rome and Paris and around the world. There is a dark scepter that has risen. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ better rise up and understand and meet the challenge. Okay, Lord. All right. I'll say that one too. Some 20 years ago, a radio personality said something that amazed me and got me thinking. This is what he said. It was Michael Savage. Regardless of what you think of him. And he said, as much as I am against illegal immigration for America, because it's, it, it comes in, it changes things, you know what I'm talking about, all that stuff. He said... Mark my words, all of the illegal aliens, all of the, those that are migranting to the United States from Mexico, South America, and so forth, are going to be really one of the main things that, things that stems the tide of Islam. Because they're Christians, they're Catholics, they have a different culture. And he said, the American population right now is not having babies, by and large. Caucasians, other races, they're not replacing themselves. The major growth that's happening in the United States is from Muslims that are immigrating to the United States. I'm not anti-Muslim. I'm talking about Islam. All right? Immigrating, and they're having all kinds of kids. And he said, they're outpacing. And before long, they're going to begin to influence and change the culture in America. And he said... The only thing that is keeping that at bay is the Christians that are coming from the South. Interesting, isn't it? All I'm saying is think about it. I'm thinking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now let's get back to my point. <laughs> and that is that the Lord spoke to me and he said that people are going to be having supernatural encounters. Now listen to this. What Paul said here, 
not only visions and revelations that are other than visions. I am getting to a point. He said in verse 2, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. And I know what that experience feels like sometimes. It just happens. I don't know if it was what we would call real. Was that something that occurred right here? Was that an angel that just appeared? Or was this a vision? Or was this a spiritual encounter? And you know what? It doesn't matter. Because they're all covered. Those of you that are prophetic, spirit-filled, hear me with your heart, with your spiritual ears. I'm telling you that there's going to be an increase in the months ahead of these kind of supernatural encounters. In the 10th chapter of Acts, Peter was in the rooftop of Joppa. And an angel appeared to him in a vision. In Acts 12, verse 9, Peter had another experience, and he said he didn't know if the angelic deliverance was real or a vision. Do you hear me? Because he was thrown into prison, chained between two soldiers. One soldier chained to one arm, another soldier chained to the other arm, and then two soldiers outside the door, and then a, another um, guard sentry further down the hall. And an angel came in, took the chains off, supernaturally somehow affected all of those soldiers because none of them were aware of it. Like in a deep sleep or something. And then he led Peter, opening the doors that were locked out of the prison. And then when he got him into the city, the angel disappeared. And Peter said, I didn't know if it was real or a vision. It was real, Buster. It wasn't just a vision. He had had a vision of the sheep being lowered down with all the different unclean animals in it and the Lord talking to him about he was bringing the Gentiles into the church. That was a vision. Heaven's open. This one was a real, physical experience. You get where I'm going with this? That's why Paul said, in the body or out of the body, I don't know. I've had both of those kind of experiences. There's something that's happening in Washington, D.C. that the Lord has been revealing and showing me that goes back to a vision I had a couple of years ago where the Lord took me up. By the way, these kind of things that I'm talking to you about right now, some of you may just say, well, you know, big deal. Some of you are going to catch, really. What I'm gonna, you're, everybody's going to catch something, okay? I didn't mean to minimize for, for anybody. You're going to catch this. But these things are real because these are experiences I've had. These are things that are coming. I just want you to be forewarned. I want you to see. If it happens to you, I want you to be prepared. Okay? I had an experience where I was taken up. You know, the, one of the times that uh, I appeared on Sid Roth's It's Supernatural. He said, Mike, I hear you talk about these experiences. Like, for instance, the one that I was... Uh, caught up into the third heaven, the Lord said, and he gave me that commission of uh, teaching third heaven authority to God's people. He said, sometimes you say you call it a vision. Sometimes you just say that you were caught up. And he said, which was it? I said, I was caught up. And he said, I knew it. I knew it. He said, why do you call it a vision? I said, I guess, Sid, it's because People don't understand. 
A lot of people just, just figure any kind of supernatural thing has to be some kind of a vision. You actually couldn't go there, for heaven's sake, you know, any of these kind of things. And he said, I understand that, but I want you to know something. When you come on my show, do not call it a vision. You have my permission to tell it exactly like it is. You were caught up to third heaven. And I said, thank you, Sid. And I did. I was caught up. These kind of things we struggle with sometimes. We're trying to just navigate and figure out what's going on with our lives. But you've got to understand, you are a supernatural being. The spirit on the inside of you is more real than the body on the outside of you. That's your earth clothing. Of course it's important. Protect it. Feed it. Take care of it. All right? That's what keeps you here on planet earth. You got to have the earth suit in order to stay here. When the earth suit's gone, something happens to it. Then you got to, your spirit has to go be with Jesus. So if you want to live long, satisfied, then take care of your earth suit. It's your badge of authority, so to speak, that allows you, your spirit here on the earth, to walk in authority and to release heaven. So take care of it. But these kind of things, we have to understand that sometimes it's going to happen in the body, sometimes it's going to happen out of the body, sometimes it's going to be a vision, sometimes it's going to be a real experience. And you just have to learn with your spiritual senses to go with what the Spirit of God is doing at the time. And let him teach you and walk it through. Praise God. In Numbers 12, verses 6 through 8, the Lord God himself, speaking, said that he made known by visions himself to the prophets. By visions to the prophets. But he said that he spoke face to face with Moses. Do you see what I'm going after? Moses may have had visions at times. But God said he spoke to him face to face. In other words, it was real. It happened. Just like that angel that came and hauled Peter out of prison. It was real in the natural realm. Not just a vision that was figurative about revelation or signs of the times or things to come or whatever. God has the ability to operate in all realms. I'm telling you, body of Christ right now, listen to me. Those things are opening up more to us and to your life. Hallelujah. In Matthew 1, verse 20, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. But in Luke 1, verses 26 and 27, the angel Gabriel directly appeared to Mary. They do both. So when these supernatural encounters, I'm dovetailing some of the things that I'm talking to you about with angelic activity because the Lord told me to do that today and tell you, angels are watching over you. Angels are interacting with you. Did you know that the Old Testament prophets called God dreams in the night as visions of the night. Visions and dreams. CK is more of a dreamer and I'm more of a seeing vision. But they're the same thing, only one awake and one asleep. And neither one of them is inferior to the other. Otherwise, we've got a problem here with scripture hallelujah 
In Luke 2, verses 8 and 9, angels directly appeared to the shepherds in announcing Jesus' birth. They didn't have a vision. It was real. In 2 Kings 6, verse 17, Elisha and his servants had been encircled by the enemy. And if you remember the story, the servant was fearful for his life because he saw no way of escape. All he saw was calamity coming. Well, Elisha himself, he was at peace. So to calm his servant, he said, Lord, open the servant's eyes. The Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw chariots of fire. The angels of God, chariots of fire coming. And when they got to the enemy, they smote him with blindness. So was that just a vision? His eyes were open to a real experience. The angels were there. In Acts 12, verse 23, we find where Herod, because he was claiming himself to be God and denying the real God, was struck by an angel, eaten by worms and died. That wasn't died and then eaten by worms in the ground. He was sick, eaten by worms, which called it, caused his death. Angels do so many things. I started to tell you a little bit earlier, and I've got to go back to it, that a couple of years ago, the Lord caught me up into the Spirit over the continental United States. He took me over Washington, D.C. And at that particular point, sometime there, I've had encounters where he took me to the White House or even took me into the Oval Office on a couple of occasions, spoke to me, showed me different things. But on this specific occasion, this encounter was it real was it a vision was it I don't care and as I was over Washington DC itself and I was looking down the Lord spoke to me and he said prophet stir the spirit that kind of shocked me I, man, I've had a lot of spiritual encounters, but not anything to where the Lord has said, call me prophet or any of those things. I, you know, my humility was getting in the way. My embarrassment. I, he said, prophet, stir the spirit. So for a second, I just had to deal with this stuff and then steal myself and say, okay. A staff appeared in my hand, my right hand, and I pointed the bottom of the staff down toward Washington, D.C., and just obeyed, stir the spirit. I didn't know what that meant, but I just began to stir like this with that staff, and as I did, the atmosphere began to swirl, and as it swirled, then I could see angels in the swirling. The angels of God being stirred in fighting for America against all of this foolishness. I don't even know what word to use. Going on in Washington, D.C. Things that are of Jezebel and Antichrist. And I began to hear Sounds coming out of the stirring, like a hurricane, a volcano, not a volcano, a tornado or something. Sounds started coming up, and it was the sounds of war. 
And in the sounds of war, it was hard to describe all of the different sounds, but a lot of them were even ones from biblical times. I could hear rustling. I could hear movement. I could hear chariot wheels. I could hear horses hooves. And mixed in, I could hear the sounds of present day kind of things that were occurring. As I heard those sounds, and the Lord began to speak to me, and I realized, you know, it's like in Samuel 5, verse 24, we find that when King David, at one time, the Philistines were coming after him, and he went to the Lord, and he sought the Lord, how? How do I defend ourselves, my people? How do we defend against this? And the Lord spoke to him and said, do not go out against them right now. He said, I want you to go over to this certain place, and you lay in hiding. You wait there, and when you hear the sound of marching in the mulberry trees, then attack. David obeyed him, and when the sound of the marching, he didn't say the sound of wind. A lot of people will try to rationalize. I'm sorry, but I, I just don't rationalize these things anymore. Could it have been the wind? Could it have been something else? Or, you know, He said the sound of marching. And when the angelic hosts appeared and began marching through the tops of the mulberry trees, David attacked, and there was a great victory that was one on that day. I heard those, sign, those kind of sounds. Also in 2 Kings chapter 7 verse 6. We find that Elisha was in Samaria. And there was a great famine. And the Syrian army was coming in. And uh, had surrounded them. They were all going to perish. Because of the famine, nothing to eat. The Syrian army one day heard something approaching. They heard the sound of chariots and the pounding of horses' hooves. These were experienced warriors. It scared them. Because all they could think of is that somehow the king of Israel and that Elisha and others had hired an Egyptian army or the army of some others to come to defend them. And they heard the chariots and the horses' hooves. And in their fear, they fled the camp. There was no physical army. But there was an angelic army. And they fled. And so the people then went out and gathered up all of the food and the provisions and everything from the army. And were greatly saved by the Lord. It wasn't just God supernaturally. My opinion. Supernaturally produced a sound like. It was the sound of the angelic army. These kind of things are going to happen. They are happening right now. And the thing that I think that I need to just kind of tell you the most, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Lord said, do you want to experience it? Do you want to be part of it? Are you ready to open yourself up for supernatural encounters? Visions, dreams, angelic visitations, things that happen in the real here and now, as well as what happened in a prophetic sight, seeing, hearing. It all comes together. And I hope that you're catching what I'm throwing right now. Is that 
It's not up to us to worry about or even get down and try to, on paper, divide and figure out whether this was a vision, whether this happened, whether it was in the body or out of the body, whether it was an angel or whether it was the Holy Spirit or whether it was something by anointing that changed and did this or whether it was you know, a manifestation somehow of an angel or something else that occurred here or you know what I mean? All this. All I'm saying is that the Lord told me to tell you it's coming. It's coming. I've done the best that I can right now to just explain it. But I want you to know that it's coming. It's coming. And if you would like to receive it, if you would like to be part of it, those of you right now in the sanctuary... Raise your hand. Those of you on the live stream, acknowledge it. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. ready. Stand on your feet with me. I feel the anointing so strong right now I can hardly stand. I'm going to decree a thing. I'm going to release a thing here today. And it's not only in this room, but it's going out across the nation and the nations. Get ready. Get ready. Say it again. I'm ready. ready. (laughs) Yes. Woo. Yes. Hallelujah. All right, lift your hands, lift your hearts here and at home and on the live stream. Get ready, get ready, get ready, because I feel that anointing building right now. I feel it, and I will give the prophet's decree now. And you're going to find that angels are going to begin to move. Also, that supernatural experiences are going to happen that there'll be gifts of the Spirit. There'll be all these things, but you have to be ready. You have to get out of your flesh, get out of your head, get into the Spirit. Open yourself up to the anointing and the way the Spirit of God moves. You have to learn how to operate and navigate the spiritual realm now because God is looking for a lion's army that is not just natural but supernatural, spiritual, operating in the heavenly things of God with heavenly weapons of warfare now, operating in third heaven authority. It's time. It's time for all of us now the world needs it we owe the world an encounter with Jesus and we owe the world to stand up and to pull down wickedness and evil that is in our land and around the world and to do it in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and we must learn how to do it in the spirit now so say it one more time I am ready Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, now, release your anointing upon the people. Release the timing for the supernatural to come in. Release the experiences. Draw us into the heavenly realms. Release it, for we are a people in the lion's army that move in the spirit. We fly with the eagles. We work these things through the natural realm. We do not obey a natural commander. We obey Jesus, the captain of the Lord's host. We obey him, the lion of Judah. And when the lion roars, the lion's army responds. And we do it now. And the Lord said, I can feel this now, is that it's time. Start listening. Start listening with your spirit. Start listening. Start listening more and more with your spirit. 
What are the things that you feel on the inside? And they sometimes are gentle, but they keep rising up. And it's like, oh, you just know something. You see something. You hear something. It's coming from the spirit man. It's coming from the spirit of God. You just know it. You can feel something moving as the angels are beginning to shift things in your life and bringing you to that point. And then you see and you experience an anointing hits you. And it doesn't matter whether it's a real thing or whether it's a vision or whether it's in the spirit or whatever. Because you are part of the lion's army. You are prophetic warriors. You are the ones who will respond. And God will use you. And he will also bless you. Because these things are not only for the big things. But they're also for the small things. The things in your life he cares about. He cares about you. He cares about your family. He cares about your health, your finances, your ministry, your life. He cares about you. And you are caught up in and you live in that realm. The realm that God intended all along for believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to operate in. To live there with him. On the earth in your body, but in heaven through your spirit. And the two combined. There is a natural realm and there is a spiritual realm. And you were created to move in both. Live in both simultaneously. Hear information from both. But to make your decisions and to receive your authority, and your power from the spiritual realm and let it invade your natural realm. I pray that upon your people right now. Anointing, anointing for hearing the voice of God. Revelation. As Paul said, visions and revelation. Let him be upon you. Be upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People, what I'm telling you right now is as real to me as anything in my life. CK and I and Brian live in this realm. We are weird ducks, I admit it. The way that the world and that the church the, um, operates so much traditional church I'm talking about is that they just think that we're absolutely crazy but what they think is crazy is real it's real in our lives and we are given to the body of Christ to share that with you and to teach you who wish to how to do it how to operate how to receive it And right now, the impartation and the release, because this is the time. And the release that I just gave was not just one for you uh, to, to bring these blessings to your life, but it was the timing of what's happening now. It was a release in the time, the clock of God, right at this moment to say, now is the time. Now it's going forward. Now. Strength, strength. Power, power. Strength and power. It's all in the spirit. The wisdom of the Holy One. Is all in the spirit. And it shall come forth through you. For I am building an army. An army that knows how to live in both realms. That army shall stem the tide of wickedness and evil. That army 
shall bring to pass a new season of the glory of the living God. Bring your glory, Lord. Bring your glory. Bring your glory. Bring your glory. Bring your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the voices. It's like the sound of many waters, but I hear thousands of voices crying out to the Lord. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of voices crying out to the Lord. Saying, choose me! I'm ready, Lord! I hear them surrendering to God. And they shall do mighty exploits in the name of their God. I see the Holy Spirit coming upon them and empowering them from their inner man, their inner being. I see sicknesses leaving their body. I see weaknesses leaving their body. I see oppression and confusion leaving their minds. I see heavy weights of the cares of this life being lifted from them. And I see in their hearts like a small light that begins to grow and it's freedom and it's the understanding of who they are in Christ and I see it overtaking them it's called destiny Being like Jesus, destiny. So I pray for everyone in this room. I pray for you on the live stream now. Let you know, you make a difference. The eyes of Jesus are on you. And the supernatural is part of you. It's what you were created for. In the name of Jesus, I come into alignment with that. And I pray for every sickness, every weakness, to be driven out of the bodies of the lion's army, the people of God that are standing to attention today. I pray for covenant to be fulfilled. Strengthen them. Prosper them. Anoint them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. You receive the impartation. You must activate it with your faith in the Lord. From this time forward, look for the Lord to speak to you, show you things. You're going to begin sensing things you didn't sense before. 
I may be a prophet, and the Lord has a specific, unique way he deals with me. But in general, these things are for you. So I pray this last thing. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in obedience to the word and what you spoke to me. You said that you will show your wisdom, strength, and power in the months ahead. And in that time that we were in the months ahead to become the constant of the unchanging power of God flowing through us into this earth. And that we are the ones who should operate in the supernatural. We receive that. We receive that. In the name of Jesus Christ now. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise him and worship him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. And those of you on the live stream, I know the Spirit of God has touched you. He's touched you richly, deeply. And the same thing. Receive it. Receive it. Believe it. Walk in it. Expect it. Hallelujah. You're unbeatable when you operate in the Spirit about all these things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one more thing. In two days is October 31st, which is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we will cry, save now and send prosperity. Devil, it's not your day. We take it back. It's not your day. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, man, at this particular point, I know the Spirit of God is moving in some different ways. I can feel the anointing for some ministry and things coming, but I want to give you right now an opportunity. Nay, I changed that a little bit. I want to right now call upon you to give into the prophet's life and ministry so that you can reap the prophet's reward. Now, I can say that. It's Bible. The apostle Paul said, I seek not to the Philippians. This is my translation. These things for my account, but for yours, that you may open a debit credit account in heaven so that God can supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's why I said I want to get it to you. Supernatural finances to you. And God will keep his promises. Hallelujah. Okay, ushers, could you come on up, please? We're going to receive this offering. Those of you that are on the live stream, you can go to our website. The link is in the description. And when you go to the website, there is a secure donation page right there that you can give and you can participate in this. Those of us that are in the room, we are going to receive offering. Receive it. We're not just going to take it. We're receiving an offering. We're taking nothing from you. We're receiving your blessing to come back to you with the same measure that it was given. And it, to increase it, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold in the name of Jesus Christ. So checks to Word of Life or Mike Thompson Ministries. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> you are such a good God. You know what, people? I, I'm going to continue praying, but I'm, off, I'm somewhere. I'm off out there. That, the only reason I tell these things is not, uh, see, my, my flesh. I don't want you to misunderstand, but I want to tell you how these things operate. Right now, I'm out there. And I see in the spiritual realm a whole bunch of different things that are happening.
praise God. But my body's right here, so I got to finish this. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless your people for their faithfulness. And I release the anointing for supernatural finances upon them now. Amen. Go ahead, gentlemen, please. There's one other thing I'm feeling here. Um, without explanation, I'm just going to do it. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray for the people that are either in this room or that are watching by live stream. Lord God, that are having a rough time right now because of the increase in demonic activity surrounding what they call Halloween. I can feel, I know many good people, there is no condemnation at all upon you. It is because of experiences that you have had and things that have happened to you, attacks, many people who have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder because of abuses and other things that have happened, and it's just a rough time. And I want you to know Jesus cares about you. And so do I. And without condemnation on you. Because there's nothing wrong with you in the sight of the Lord. I condemn the foul spiritual turmoil and attacks that have come against your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse them. I strip them off. And I speak comfort and healing into your life now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for joining in live stream. We'll catch you next time.